Oh, good morning, guys. Vincent here. Um, I'm pretty sorry about the audio on the other videos. I found out too late that, uh, that the phone was actually hitting the window, which made that rattle noise, or like tick, 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 tick. So uh, today I brought a microphone uh, connected to this. Also, I found out I look pretty stupid when I wear that headset, so... <laughs> uh, all videos now will be without headset, but I think it will be with this. So, well... We can hear what I say, right? Well, not that I say anything of value, because I... I think there are some gold corns in there, but most of it is just, you know, like, fill. Like when you buy... Chocolate Crunch cereal, right? All you imagine is like a big ball of chocolate, but chocolate is like 1% of it. Yeah. Well, today is special. Uh, we have what it's called a self-study day. Ever had one of those? Where you have all day to yourself so you can show how structured you are and like me, meet about one and a half hour too late. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that's actually a direct reference to the other video I made about ADD or ADHD. It's, uh, it's the thing about, you know, being structured. It's when you do stuff you love, man, you can't get out of the door fast enough, but when you do stuff you don't love, oh my god, it takes takes all the energy in the body to uh, to go about these videos um, I have been considering a lot how long they're going to be you know the length of the video is there any length that's too long or too short you know you could just skip a lot but then again there's if you have to skip through everything I say just to get to the things you think are funny, yeah. But today I think, uh, more about family, right? Let's talk about family. You see, I also, in another video, told uh, about a little gold trick on how you can uh, accu accumulate value over time. And of course, I actually want to do that. Um, but I want to tell you something about myself. I'm 32 years old. Uh, I have always been very good at working. I'm a real hard-working guy. I've always had a job. Always. And you know, for a long period of my life, many years of my life, I didn't work under 80 hours per week. 80, eight, zero, okay? Per week. And uh, that really showed me to, you know, appreciate being with people you love and like. But also, now, being 32, I've worked all these years, you know, I want to work with something that I love, rather than just for the sake of the work. And to be honest, well, I love technology, I love... You know, robots and every stuff, everything around technology, everything about it, I just love it. Love the universe, the thought of space, you know, abstract thinking in every way, you know. Whenever we have a futurist saying something or a futurist saying something, you know, I just, I love to hear what they have to say, you know, going over it in my mind, compared to everything I know and everything I've heard, question it. But now it's, I'm studying for something that will just give me a regular job, really. It's a job in a business that's booming. Robot business, right? That's booming. But my strong side is actually not in the programming part. Uh, out of a class of 15, I'm like the bottom three. So that's, you know, I am like the worst of all of them too actually write code and, and, and figure out to, you know, write a code that would actually work. But I'm a better salesman than all of them. 
I can pitch a talk like nobody else, or very few, someone else. Uh, and I think that's uh, that's about my enthusiasm about things, you know. I am very enthusiastic about robots and technology, and if I have to sell a machine and I believe in that machine, I will sell that machine. <laughs> that's for sure, because people, you know, you can sense my. You can sense my enthusiasm and my happiness about it, and you know, I'm excited on how it works. So yeah, it's uh, it would be in the sales uh, department if I should be hired. But then the thing is that I'm studying for programming robotics, and I know that being in the sales department is part of it. But dude, when it comes to automation engineering, it's just like. I still have to go through the schooling and the process of writing some pretty advanced code. And we're working primarily with structured text. Yeah. Now I, I want to I want to say I want to sell things or entertain. Yeah. Whenever I'm pitching something uh, for example in class, I I am trying to make it, you know, not so much dull, more exciting. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah, there's two sides to me, definitely. I love to entertain, but I also love to be alone. Yeah. Figuring out the, your life, right? Got to be the hardest part of everything, you know. I. I don't envy those who got a lot of money. I actually envy those who do stuff for a living that they love. You know? That gotta be the best thing, you know. You could do stuff for a living that you love, and it will make a living for you. Just, just make a living. I'm not talking about being a millionaire. Just talking about making a living out of stuff you love, so that every day would just be your hobby. And you could survive on that? Imagine the happiness you would spread in your family. Imagine the joy, you know, you, that you could actually give to somebody. That shit is contagious, man. You know, happiness and joy, that's really contagious. And yeah, that's, that's definitely the people that I, that I would envy the most. As of now, I don't have many viewers here on, on YouTube, and I probably never will. I can see that the most and the biggest interest of all my videos was from over 10 years ago when I ate chili and I recorded it. And the funny part is that, you know, YouTube was still very young at, at that point, and I was among the first people ever to upload a video where I tested out eating, uh, at that point, the strongest chili in the world, the, the Biolokia. But, um, yeah, I, I, I never thought about it, you know, as a future, you know, sitting behind a camera and then do funny stuff. Then many years later, a Danish guy, Chili Klaus, I don't know if you've heard of him, uh, who have also been on the show with Sean Evans, uh, First We Feast, they were after me, you know? But I didn't, I didn't give it any thought. It's just for me that was just like you know, funny to record yourself trying to eat a chili so people can see the reaction on on how it would happen if you ate the strongest chili in the world. And at that point, I was actually used to eat some pretty strong chili, so strong chili wasn't really a deal for me. But you know that chili, uh, that's a whole new level of chili. And uh, now in my spare time, I actually still, uh, I still have chilies. Yeah, I've actually been growing chilies ever since. And uh, the next chili I will try to grow and taste is uh, is the new, uh, I think it's called, uh, oh yeah, what is it called? Reaper X or something like that. The, strong, the new strongest in the world, over 2 million in Scoville. It's crazy. Well, I think I will have to cut this video up in pieces, you know. I'll cut this here, and then I'll figure out what to say in the other videos, and I'll try to make it more relevant for each video, okay? So this is really just a big mashup and mix of all my thoughts and everything, but... Yeah.